This will be an unboxing of the Corsair HDI Hydro Series with Corsair Link High Performance Liquid CPU Cooler and then that in French, I think. Uh, Corsair HDI is the uh, successor to the H80 uh, the, with, with an I. So it's got all the Apple next gen. This says iOS 8. Uh, no, it doesn't. So the Corsair H80i and H100i, they have Corsair Link functionality, which is a software utility by Corsair that allows you to control all sorts of variables um, about your Corsair uh, supported, Corsair Link supported devices. This also includes some power supplies. You can monitor fan speed, temperatures, all sorts of things, and we'll have that control depending on mode. So if you want um, uh, to be able to control your cooler fans and such uh, quite efficiently, that's what Corsair Link can do for you if you're motherboard or if uh, third-party software doesn't already do that for you. But it's not about Corsair Link, it's about the cooler itself and about what this thing supports. So we've got some information on the uh, top here that says, protect your hardware, increase CPU's overclocking potential. Uh, dual fans and a double thick radiator delivering outstanding cooling efficiency. Monitor your temperature and control lighting with fan speed uh, on your screen with no additional hardware necessary. And the Corsair SB120L, which are uh, just like the uh, regular retail SB120 fans, except uh, basic lower cost version, uh, which pressure optimized fans are used for custom engineering impellers for better state pressure to, uh, and to noise ratio, offering improved performance level at no noise levels. Even though the fans in here are quite noisy. On the back we have a graph, a typical Corsair graph, if you've seen any of these videos related to a Corsair Hydro series before, where they basically call out as what of the competition has failed and they'd actually reference the results. So here we have the same, an Intel i7 uh, 3770K running at 4.6 GHz, 100% load, the name at temperature 25 degrees Celsius. With the H100i, the CPU was uh, at 47.94 degrees, which makes me really interested how they can get the 0.94 when most software utilities, including most motherboard BIOSes, don't go beyond single unit degrees. So I find that quite interesting, unless that is an average temperature, which is probably more likely. It might say it on the box here somewhere but I can't see it. Good job, Corsair. And the noise at 100% load. And note they say for the Intel box cooler, they just say fail, they don't actually sell a temperature. Um, which could mean that it actually did fail, but still that's not quite good enough. A noise at 100% load, Corsair H80i, 37.68 decibels. And then uh, Corsair H80, which is the previous gen non-i, non-i OS 8, but no, but seriously not. Uh, Corsair H80, 39 decibels. That, that is, is basically the same level of noise. You, you would probably find the average person wouldn't be able to tell the difference between two decibels. More probably like in the factors of five to ten would be something that's sort of noticeable unless you're listening back to back. Uh, compatibility in terms of CPUs. Support for LGA 1150, 1155, 1156. Again, 1150 and 11, all the way to 1156. It's the same mounting uh, positions. Uh, LGA 1366 for the X58 chipset. And socket LGA 2011 with AMD socket support for AM2, AM3, uh, FM1, and FM2. And then, as sort of a basic, basic term in ter terms of processors, Intel Celeron, Intel Pentium, Intel Core i3, i5, i7, which are applicable to all of these sockets. It, it, there, note there is no 775 socket support, so you have the Core 2, Core 2 Quad. Um, according to this, it won't support, but I imagine there might be brackets available. Who knows? Some of their older generation of products uh, have supported socket 775. So it's hard to say, although this is a new mounting mechanism in comparison to the original H80, the original H60 uh, 2011 version, and the original H100. So this is using their magnetic clamp system. We'll get to that a little bit further on. And we've got AMD Athlon, uh, 64 Opteron, uh, Sempron, Phenom, Phenom 2, Avon 2, Opteron 138X, and the A series. So that's pretty much it. Compatible in worst cases with the standard 120mm fan mount. An internet connection is required for the free Corsair Link dashboard uh, download and include Corsair Link cable requires a standard motherboard 2.0 header, so it'll use the USB 2.0 header built in to the motherboard. Failing, if you didn't have one, you could always run it through um, an adapter. And on the side, we just have information about the basic specifications of the fans and the radiator. So fan dimensions are 120mm fans, standard 25mm deep. Our fan speed is uh, 2,700 RPM. That's quite high, so it's going to be producing quite a lot of noise. With an airflow of 77 CFM, which is quite reasonably high. But remember, the important thing for a radiator, particularly one with a dense fin arrangement, is getting static pressure. So that's the number we're going to be more interested in. Fan pressure is 4 millimeters H2O. That is quite high. That's quite good. Um, and fan noise level is 37.68 decibels, which is quite audible. Uh, once you sort of um, add the two fans that it's going to be on here, 
plus system noise and ambient noise like that's going to add it's definitely going to be audible in the background this is certainly not going to be a silent piece of equipment but it will certainly run cool and if you're on idle you can set up Corsair link to reduce the fan speed if the uh, CPU is under too much stress and the radio dimensions are 120 millimeter by 152 millimeter and it's 38 mil thick again because it's the uh, the thicker design as you can see here so there will be uh, an extra whole lot of uh, bulk in terms of fitting a 25 mil fan plus a 38 mil fan mil radiator plus an extra 25 mil fan but we'll get to that once we get it out of the box a lot of yapping a lot of talking let's get it out of the box we can see here Corsair Solutions Guide 2012 it's 2014 I mean that's it's I mean it's better the last time I saw one of these inside of a Corsair product it was talking about uh, Corsair products from 2010 and that would have been on a Corsair 860 version 2 I think but they have uh, a 2010 pamphlet now they have a 2012 pamphlet so good got 800d uh, 600t a cases and the k60 fps and and you know all the peripherals and accessories and things and these are all outdated and probably eol and you can't probably actually buy ram that looks like that anymore or probably that and that's an h100 which they don't actually sell anymore you can only get an h100i and that's an ax1200 which have been replaced with the axi series so all this is pretty much irrelevant um, and I would say recycle this. Throw it away. And recycle. Do the right thing. Warranty against defects. Uh, goods and guarantees that cannot be excluded on a change of Jimmy Law. Da 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 da. Good warranty, two year. Uh, warranty duration ranges from two years to a lifetime. See more information at that URL. As you see there. And then we have a Corsair H80 High Performance Liquid Cooler Quick Start Guide. And actually, this is, this is actually worth reading because the. Uh, 1150 range and the 2011 range of standoffs are actually different. Again, it can be quite easy if you're not um, focusing too much. You can actually mix those up quite easily. So it is good to have a read of this just to make sure you've got the right bits and pieces. There are eight screws for mounting the fans. We've got uh, fan, Intel, and then the uh, different mounts and such. And then how to install it. Again, with the, the breakdown of the uh, fan alignment. And note that they have the, uh, here they have it that the in sort of inverse to what they originally sort of s have been spruiking uh, in terms of um, fan setup um, is on the original Corsair H50s and the earlier H60s and such. They, the, a lot of the recommendation was to have the fans on the opposite side, so the, the actual uh, back of it, the grill where the sticker is, uh, that's where the air will come to. So in this case, they're having the air come from the inside of the case outside. Too many warm ambient temperature from video cards or other hardware inside of the case is going to be going through the radiator rather than cool, clean air uh, from the outside coming through the radiator to make sure that you've got uh, just better air temps coming into the radiator straight from the get-go. Probably not going to make too much of a difference to that, but it is something to note, and I find that interesting. I mean, you can install either way, it'll work perfectly fine. Uh, Intel backplate, uh, 2011 has its own backplate, so you don't uh, need that. That's why it's got different screws. Sound of screws, and then this is the magnetic hold-down. So instead of having to uh, sort of clumsily mount the entire unit, you just clamp that on and then you sort of position it in and it's a little bit easier to install. Uh, installing the pump unit, uh, again using it uh, at the opposite inverted sides. Uh, pan, fan, uh, pump to power, this appears to be using a SATA there and uh, a three pin for the uh, speed control. And then there's the, the Corsair um, fan connection power and that's where of course our link and the USB connection there. Pump to USB header da, 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 da. and then it's the AMD installation method. Much the same just with uh, slightly different uh, hold down plates and such. Um, and holding down in, uh, in a slightly different position because obviously the hardware is ever so slightly different but uh, after the actual basic installation there's some FAQs there. Uh, it's basically the same. And then they have in the back here 5 year warranty. We get things a little bit more streamlined there, of course, there. I don't know what to believe. We've got a bit of foam. Nice foam, white foam. Soft foam, it's not going to break. Uh, and then we've got just a, a mess of plastic bags. Just, who knows, this is... And then here we've got a really thick radiator in terms of like the regular 120mm and 240 mil standard two radiators. This radio is quite thick, so you do want to make sure that uh, you do have 
uh, enough mounting clearance in your case to be able to put an HDI in. Um, you could do a single fan mount uh, on either side, but you uh, won't get optimal performance because it will take a lot more air pressure to get the air through that extra distance through the uh, the resistance that is through the fins. You can see through the fins there. We've got the uh, high quality tubing coming down to the base plate here, and then as the uh, uh, sort of plastic guard that uh, covers the base plate here. We've got a pre-applied uh, thermal compound. I uh, shouldn't need to replace it. We've got our in uh, interface, which is the USB and uh, fan in in um, plug-in sections there. This Corsair logo will light up uh, white. You can't, I'm pretty sure you can't change it. We have a solder power connection, and we have a three-pin, which seems to be just carrying power, which I find interesting. It doesn't have power. Uh, it just says it doesn't even have ground on that either. I find that quite interesting. Uh, it definitely won't have uh, any fans. Actually, that might even be fan speed control. I might possibly, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure I'm assuming it's going to be coming through uh, side of power. So you just plug your fans straight into the base here. Let's try and get that back on. See the uh, basic little sticker on the front. Basically, right, you've got your standard uh, mounting screws to uh, mount the uh, pump, which is. Uh, Remain standard basically across all radios, all across Corsair's line. And then we have the uh, two Corsair SP120L pressure optimized fans, which will sit either side of the radiator. So, in terms of uh, actual thickness, um, and it might be a bit tricky whilst in the plastic bags, the, uh, the bulk that's going to be sitting over your motherboard is going to be that thick. Um, it's just so you're aware of. So, if you have uh, Possibly in the instances of X79, if you have particularly high memory modules on the left side of your motherboard, uh, or the memory module placement is a little bit off, or you have some other um, uh, extra fans or extra hardware or weird sort of mounts of something, in your case on the uh, uh, rear 120, which is where this is traditionally typically mounted, uh, do be aware of that because um, it is something you do need to take into the equation before mounting the H80i. But once you mount it, you'll get pretty reasonable performance out of it. Um, it's not going to perform like an H100. H100 has extra surface area for the, uh, the radiator itself. Uh, and then also then custom water and cooling lips will perform much better than that even further. But in terms of uh, just uh, good stock CPU cooling, that's pretty good. So in here we've got the uh, hold down plates. We've got the uh, AMD ones. All nice and sort of shiny. And then in the same bag we have together the uh, Intel hold down plate and the back plate. Uh, and the side of the plastic is what goes pressed up against the motherboard so you don't actually short anything out. And um, make contact. Here we've got a fan connection to the uh, CPU. Uh, uh, fan connect, uh, uh, connection for uh, the, the pump, and then we've got the uh, Corsair Link connection, and then the uh, USB 2 uh, front panel connection to get Corsair Link working. So that's just an extra cable. You'll have to manage them. We have all our screws. We've got the uh, different screws for the uh, the radio mount. They're the same, and then the uh, the different mounting um, pieces here for either. In fact, you can see the two different size ones there. So. This one is uh, 1150 series, and this one up above is socket LG11. So just watch out for that when you are installing the H80. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching the unboxing of the Corsair H80i Hydro Series High Performance Liquid Cooler.